Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Man, it's good to see everybody. This is a good day. Breakfast was good. One person enjoyed breakfast. Okay. Hey, it's okay. Well, I enjoyed breakfast. I thought it was awesome. A couple things. A couple things we're going to catch up on uh, real quickly. Um, first of all, this Saturday, man, this is called up, um, called up in a hurry. I didn't realize it. Spend for Life. And if you've been a part of this body, you know what Spend for Life is. If you haven't been a part of, Spend for Life is an outside organization. And I don't think Mark and Beth's in here now. Is Ashley in here? Is anybody in here? Nope. Okay, they're all outside. They were here. Spend for Life is, is, an, is an event held at uh, Davidson County Community College Saturday where you ride a little spin bike. You get on it and you turn the wheels. And the money, the proceeds go, uh, they go in to help people with cancer. Stays local, does everything like help with transportation, maybe with medicines, just whatever. It's an amazing event. You can sign up. There's sign-up sheets out there if you want to be on a team that actually rides a bike. I think there's some sign-up sheets out there if you want to participate in helping set up. And they asked me to, to make this announcement. Friday morning at 8 o'clock, this Friday, at Lexington Diner. I think this is those who are going to pick up the bikes. We'll meet for breakfast at Lexington Diner at 8 o'clock. So if you're part of that, uh, be at Lexington Diner and enjoy some breakfast. You can probably, I think Ashley and Beth are probably out there. I'm not sure if Mark's still here or not. But catch one of them. If not, there's some contact information on this thing. You can get a hold of them and find out uh, what to do and where to go. So that's pretty cool. Th then this is new. We, there's some little cards out there, and it says Journey Card Ministry. We've got a group that just felt compelled to reach out to people who, who just need to be reached out to. Some people just need to hear that somebody's thinking about them and caring about them and loving them and praying for them. So they, they came up with this little card, and it just says Journey Card Ministry. And do you know someone that needs prayer, encouragement, or support? All they're going to do is mail them a card. Not this card, but they're going to mail them a warm card with a handwritten note. And all they ask is if you'll just go on the back and put the person's name that's in need of, if you'll put their name and their address, some contact information, and then they'll take care of it from there. And it's just, a, it's just an outward expression of love. It's just reaching out to those who are hurting. And I, I tell you, it's pretty cool. Some of you have probably gotten a card from us. There's, we, we live in this fast-paced world with all this technology, these phones and all this good stuff. But there's still nothing much nicer than getting a handwritten card, is there? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Now, I say that to tell you this. If, if you, how many of you have a cell phone? Most of you, almost every. If, if, you're, if you, Journey has the neatest app, and, and I've, I've got to be real honest, I don't know much about it. Matt had to load it on my phone, so if you want to know how to do it, see Matt. I, I just threw him under the bridge, but I can't do it. He put it on my phone. But this, it's, this is how it works. If you're one of those volunteers and, and you have the app, then you got a reminder this morning that we're having a party for you next week to, to celebrate. So that's pretty cool. So you can get updates and you can get reminders. Matt, I'm about right on that, aren't I? So they can download the app. And, and it's, I'm guessing it's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah, unless you have a, you know, my brain and it's not. But, but download the app. It's pretty cool. Now, as far as the volunteer party, party for volunteers, it's not too late to sign up to be a volunteer. Now, not, I mean, you sign up to be a volunteer and you, you'll get an invite to the party. But this is to celebrate. It's not to be, but it is. These people put a lot of work. They do, listen, they're sitting up there. They're running sound. They're cooking breakfast. They're in our kids' rooms. They're doing music. They're cleaning the building, all kinds of stuff. We have a crazy group of volunteers. So we just want to celebrate. So... Download the app, volunteer, have a party. And Jesus changes everything. I listen to Julie's song. So with that, we can go home. Thank you guys for coming today. Have a great night. You don't get all this. Sit down. No, I'm kidding. Nobody's leaving. No, listen, it's not. It's, well, it is that simple, really. But I, I, this was, the first service was so much fun for me. And by the way, somebody always does this. Don't bother. Somebody's right now going, I'm going to send him a text and watch him. It's turned off. I learned. After about the third time of doing that, I learned. So it's turned off. So let's, let's jump in. Gonna, <laughs> I, I, I have a background. My, my undergraduate degree is in marketing. So I love advertising. It was just interesting to me going through school and learning a little bit about advertising. You don't care, but it ties into the message, so hang with me. But um, I, I go all the way back, and this is going to date me, and I'm going I'm to put some of you guys on the spot. I'm going to date some of you because I have to know this to do this, this message. Um, I love advertising, and I love in the old days on TV, Back before Amazon and, 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 and all of that stuff uh, where you could buy online, they used to do advertisements where they immediately sold a product. They would advertise their product, and then they would say, now dial 1-800-333-333-333 and buy the product. Some of you remember that. Here, here's my question. How, much, how many of you remember something called the Ronco-Matic, uh, the ronco Vegematic? Come on, fess up. Fess up. Not as many in this crowd, so this tells me demographically you guys are younger. But some of you remember the ronco Vegematic. And, and you remember the line, it, it, it slices, dices, it peels, it, somebody says it juliets. It was so funny, I was telling somebody about it out there, and they finished the commercial. They finished the commercial for me. 
But the Ronco, uh, the Ronco Vegematic, is, is it, it slices, dices, it peels, it does all this, and it's only $19.99. Now, I got to ask you, I, I ask you how many of you remember, how many of you own one? Did I see one hand? Nope, 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 going once. Nobody. Listen, I actually had somebody, they looked, you can still buy them. I tried to find one for this message. I couldn't find one. Somebody said, if you'd have went to Amazon, I didn't. I went to the commercial. They said, if you'd have went to Amazon, you could have got a Ronco-matic, a Ronco Vegematic. And it was an amazing little pro product. Now, here's what's funny. I, I did pull up the advertisements. You can go to YouTube and find anything like that. You know what it was? It was a food processor. And my wife's going, no, my food processor plugs in. And, and, and turn it on. This one was all manual. You know, you put the potato in there and you slice it and you dice it. And it was an amazing product. But how many, if you remember the commercial, they would say, you know, this is the Ronco Vegematic. It slices, dices, and peels. It's only $19.99. But what was the next line? But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. It was amazing. And that's the part I love. They, they immediately started selling you or giving you in a lot of cases. Or actually, they were selling because the Ronco at $19.99 was worth about $0.99. Cent. And then they would give you these add-on products. But wait, there's more. And you could get all these add-on products. And then it was really cool. They'd say, but wait, there's even more. If you act now, if you'll act right now, we're going to ship it for free. We're going to Some of you are not, and you remember this. I love those advertisements. I'll tell you how effective they were. Somebody finished the commercial for me a while ago. We still remember that. It worked, and it was effective. But I, I got to thinking about it in our Christian life and our Christian walk is we've kind of missed the point here. Ronco's kind of, and, and this is going to upset some people, but they've kind of outmarketed us in selling their product. Because we, by the way, and somebody's going to say, you're comparing Jesus to Ronco. And we've got a better product. We've got a better product. His name's Jesus. Now, don't come up and say, well, you're, no. listen, Jesus is, is the, the greatest, the most amazing. He's not a product. He is a person who died on the cross for me. I get that. But what I don't get is, Ronco, people are still reciting the commercials. Pretty powerful. And I, I love it. They sold their product, and they immediately went into some attributes. But wait, but wait. I'm going to give you the Pope Peeler or whatever it was, and the Slicer Dicer, and a set of Ginsu knives, and you get a chef that comes with them. It's amazing. And you get it for $19.99 if you'll act right now. It's crazy. And I, I thought, this is, this is so powerful. We need to learn a, a lesson from this. Because we have Jesus. We have Jesus. And you don't have to wait. If you've got Jesus, you don't have to wait. But interestingly to me, this is, this is what's interesting. If you watch the marketing brilliance to what Ronco did, they, they, they introduced their product, the Vegematic, and then they started telling you the virtues. It would slice, it would dice, it would do this, it would do that. They didn't follow up with the immediate negative stuff. They didn't tell you, hey, it'll slice one potato, it makes a pot of french fries. They didn't bother to tell you that 99% of you don't have enough strength to push it through a potato. They didn't tell you that. And they didn't tell you that if you could push it through the potato, it was going to bend the blades and you could never use it again. They didn't tell you that. They didn't tell you that when you washed it, the blades would rust and then you would get tetanus and you would die. They didn't tell you any of that. They just told you if you'd wait, they've got more to give you. And if you'll wait a little longer, they'll ship it to you for free. They didn't start out with the negatives. They gave you the positives. But here's what I've learned in our lives. We'll tell somebody about Christ and that he died on the cross for our sins. We'll tell them that. But then we don't give them the next part. We stop short there. And that's awesome. So don't come up. Listen, the fact that Christ died for my sins is, is in and of itself enough. That's plenty. It's amazing. But we stop with the story right there. And here's where we go from there. We, tie, we go from that part of the story till we go start talking about everything that, that, that we're against. Now, when we're talking about Jesus, there's a lot of attributes about Jesus that are amazing. And you don't have to wait. They're available right now. With an, with, when you accept Jesus, you get the benefits of Jesus. But we stop dead in our tracks and we start going on this tirade of everything that we're against and everything Christ is against. And it's kind of sad, it's kind of heartbreaking. Because we'll tell people everything that Christ is against unless we do it. Have you noticed that? Well, well my sin's okay. Let me tell you about yours. It's not. We, we do it all the time. Listen, guilty as charged. Instead of giving them the attributes, the positives, we'll, we'll go into this tirade as, as, as we're against this and we're against this and you can't do that and you can't be this. And, and we go into all of that and I'm sitting there thinking, why are we doing that? Because Jesus is for so much more that's so good. So when it comes to the, the, the product, sorry, Jesus is unbeatable. 
It'll never let you, he'll never let you down. So why do we stop the, why do we stop the marketing? Why do we stop telling people about Jesus? Why do we stop shelling, selling, sharing, uh, sharing the attributes of Jesus? Why don't we share what he is and what he's for? Instead of going into all these little tangents, because what happens is when we go into these little tangents, I've noticed this, it's selective theology and selective scripture. I'll take what works for me and use it to my advantage. I'll take what I don't like about you and use it to your disadvantage. And let me tell you something, guys. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. I, this drives me crazy. What's well, just a little sin? Somebody please define that to me. I need to know what a little sin is. I've, I've wrestled with that for a long time. The Bible's clear. Sin is sin. There is one, one sin that's unforgivable, and that's not having a relationship with Jesus when you pass away because you can't fix that one. But sins to me all kind of, water reaches a level, well, sin reaches a level, they're all bad. So I get that part of it. So why don't we tell people about, why don't we market this a little different? Because I'm telling you, people are still talking about the Ronco Vegematic. Amazing that you could finish the commercial. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. So why, why aren't we finishing the story about Jesus? Why aren't we telling people about Jesus? Because listen, he, he's, he's more than enough. He's more than enough. And it doesn't stop with a relationship with Jesus. He came to bring so much more to us, so much value, so much to our lives. It's, it, it's over the top. So why, why do we stop short of telling people about that? And as I think about the, the, the commercial and, you know, here's the product, but wait, there's more. Ronco didn't invent that, by the way. I, I'm guessing the founder must have been a Christian because I think they got it from a guy named Jesus. And I say that because if you go to John 10, and we've been using John 10 a lot lately, it seems like. But if you go to John 10, Jesus is doing what Jesus does. He's out teaching and he's out, he's out telling people who he is and what he's about and what's, what's happening. And basically, he's talking to a group and there's some Pharisees there. And he's basically making the case that I am the way. I am the only way to the Father through me, through Jesus. I'm it. And he's making this case. Pharisees have this knack of never knowing when to be still. Never, and you'd think they would learn over a period of time. You probably don't want to challenge this man because he's smarter than we are. But, but they do, and, and Jesus just says, listen, this is what you've got to understand. I'm the way. This is the only way. And that's, listen, we don't get to make rules. kind of like sin. Just because you think your sin's not a sin, you didn't get to write the book. It's still a sin. And just because you think something your friend's doing should be a sin, and maybe it's not, then you don't get to make that call either. But Jesus, Jesus is talking to these, these, this group and these Pharisees, and they challenge him and mistake. And, but, but verse 10 in chapter 10, and we've used this recently quite a few times, is so powerful because I think it speaks to this. It speaks to Jesus, or if you want to go over to the Ronco Vegematic, it speaks to the product, which is Jesus, which is amazing, which is enough, which is you know, the most amazing thing you and I will ever know. He doesn't let us down. He won't wear out, and he will always be there. But then he goes on, and he says, but wait, there's more. And this is what he said. This is John 10. Uh, verse 10, if I can find it. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Then Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I have come that you may have life. You can have everlasting, everlasting life. You may have life and have it to the full. What he just said is there's more, guys. He didn't notice. He didn't say, but wait. He said, there's more. And it's life to the full. How many of you have life to the full? And if you're waiting on it, you're wasting your time because you don't have to wait with the relationship with Jesus. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that you can have life to the full. Do you grasp the power, the weight of that? To the full. You can have life through Jesus right now. By the way, i got to think about it. Really, shipping's free. It costs you nothing other than to commit and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you can have life to the full. Now, Again, don't miss this. Everlasting life, I am so excited about that. I'm in no hurry because I'm having a ball. I mean, I am. I'm having a ball. I get to work with Matt, who I consider one of my best friends. I, I get to see this church grow. I get to see people reaching kids, lives being changed. I'm having a ball, and I've got everlasting life. But I, listen, and we read the Lord's Prayer. It says, Thy kingdom come on earth. I want to see it on earth before I leave because he promised us. He said, listen, I come to give you life and give it to the full. You don't have to wait. You have to accept me, and you have life to the full. That's a moment when we should be rejoicing. What do you mean? No, you, listen, Jesus loves me, and I can have life to the full. Somebody's going to say, well, that sounds like prosperity. That's not what I'm talking about. I, I don't know if he'll give you money or not. I have no clue. That's not life to the full, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. 
But, but you and I, we can have life to the fullest. I want to talk about the, the, the add-ons to the, to the Vegematic because we've got an, an, an add-on to Jesus Christ and buying through Jesus Christ. So just kind of stay with me on this and think about it. But these are, these are some of the things we should be sharing with people because people are hurting right now. They're broken. And there's so much more than just life everlasting. And I get it. That's, man, I am so excited. But there's more and there's more to be experienced right here, right now, today. Let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer this because I know the answer. How many people sitting here right now need help, are hurting, broken, and they need help in some area of their life? Every one of you. Maybe minor, it may be major. Everybody in this room needs some kind of help in their life. Maybe you're battling an addiction. Maybe you're battling a sin. Maybe you're battling a relationship. I don't know, but every one of us needs help. Every one of us. And here's something else I can tell you. Everybody in here thinks their problem is worse than the person sitting beside them. I need help more than they do. And that's fair. That's human nature. It's human nature. One of the things I, I talk to people, they talk about their pains, and they say, well, my pain's so small compared to such and such. No, your pain is your pain, and it's real. Your pain is your pain. Make no bones about that. But I'm telling you, Jesus came to help with your pain and your problems and your hurt and your brokenness and whatever. He came to help. And it's really, really interesting. It goes back to this, this, this theory of my pain and my hurt is worse than yours. And, and here's what we end up saying. Says, my, my problems are so big. Nobody can help me. God can't help me with this. So what we're saying then is the creator can't help you. The one who created you, the one who created this universe, who created everything. And you don't think he can handle your little piddly problems. And I don't know what your problems are, but to him, they're small. Don't miss this. It, to him, they're small. And he can't handle them. He can deal with them. He, he can, it's amazing what he can do. So, so think about this. It goes all the way back to the Old Testament. It goes back to a guy named Abraham and Sarah. Because Abraham and Sarah were getting old, and they, they, they were supposed to have a child, a male child specifically, and they're getting really old. So they got big problems because they, they hadn't had a child. So we pick it up, and listen, listen to what we read. This is in Genesis. It goes all the way back to the first book in the Old Testament, in Genesis 18, verse 9 through 14. We just pick it up. It says, where's your wife, Sarah? They ask him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Simple enough. God says, you're going to have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in their years. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing. She can't have a child on her own. It's not going to happen. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, well, I really have a child now that I'm old. Listen to verse 14. Is anything, is anything too hard for the Lord? Think about your problems. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. I don't know what your problems are. I have no idea where you need help. But I would encourage you to ask yourself that question. Is anything too hard for God? Can I give you the answer? Are you ready for the answer? Because it's going it's to it's cause a little problem. Because the answer is, nothing is too hard for God. Nothing. I, I, I know you, you're sitting there going, but Mark, you don't understand my problems. You don't understand the broken relationships I've been through. You don't understand the addiction. You don't understand the pains. And I can't find help. Then you're going to the wrong source because nothing is too hard for God. Nothing. By the way, Sarah had a child. Sarah had a child. Now, somebody's going to say, but Mark, I, I'm there and it didn't happen. Listen, God's will, we always factor out God's will. We want things that are not in God's will. That's not going to happen. It's just not. But in this case, it, it's kind of amazing. So here's the question. Just, just, you can ask yourself this, this question. Can God help me with and fill in the blank? And the answer is yes. Fill in whatever your pain, your problem, whatever it is you need help in. Can God help me with? And the answer is yes. You have to give it to him. And then you have to trust him. You have to trust Him. See, we want to give, but we don't want to trust. And we don't like it when He doesn't answer the way we want. Well, if you trust Him, then you have to trust Him. You, no, I mean, that's tough. If you give it to Him, then you have to trust Him with it. It's funny that Sarah laughed. I think about that. We do the same thing. I can't give God my problems. That's the same as laughing in His face because He can't handle it. Sure He can. Sure He can. It's amazing. It's interesting the psalmist speaks to it. When, when, you, when you're in need of help, when you're needing help, this is what the psalmist said in 46, Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in troubles. Did you get that? A very present help. He is here. 
Did you get? He's not arm's length. He's not distant. He's not, not paying. He's here. He's a present help in our times of trouble. He is waiting on us to call out to Him. He's here. Give me your problems. Come to me with your request. I am here to help you. Why don't we share that with people? Because you know what? People are broken and hurting, and they need help. We'll tell them about the, the, the veggie-matic. We'll do that all day long, and we still Why don't we tell people, hey, you know what? You, you, a life with Christ gives you everlasting life. But did you know you get help as well? Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He's here to help us today. He's not waiting on us to pass to get to heaven. He says, I'll help you right now. Look at Sarah. I mean, here's the, the model. She's 90 years old, no child. 91 years old, child. I'll help you now. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting on you to ask me. I'm just waiting. I'm, I, I can see him going, I'm, I, what do you want me to do? I'm just waiting. Just call on my name. I'm just standing here waiting. He's a very present help in trouble. Pretty cool. But wait, there's more when it comes to this help. Here's something, and I have to wrestle with this one. This one causes, Matt and I and, and, and our, our elders, it causes us some grief. People come to the church all the time needing help. They do. Some of them are really legitimate. And we really, you guys do an amazing job. You've made it such we can help people that truly have needs where we can, we can have an impact on their life. A lot of people come seeking help, and they don't want help. They just simply want a handout. And there's a difference. There's a difference. And, and you can start to discern a little bit, but it's hard. Because we'll talk about it and we'll try to figure out which way it is. And sometimes we just do it. We'll just help even though we know it's probably somebody's just taking advantage of the church. And, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to sleep well tonight if we help somebody that's just taking advantage. But we struggle with that. But something I've learned about Jesus, when we, when we turn to Him for help, He doesn't need a committee. He doesn't need a committee. He'll help and He'll help right now. In His way and His will, He's right there right now and it's immediate. 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 Because we all do it. We'll sit there and we'll process and we'll think. Jesus, and I tell you the model, and I love this. In Mark 4, a lot of scripture today. Mark 4, verse 36 through 40. This is, this is what happens. Um, Jesus, once again, has been teaching. He does that and he does it so well. And it speaks to what we should be looking at today. It drew a crowd. But so the day, uh, the, verse 36, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was just as he was in the boat, there was also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. This boat is in, in deep water, and out in the water, and it's fixing to sink. You know what happens when it sinks in deep water and stormy water? The, the, the passengers drown. It's horrible. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. Except one thing. They got Jesus in the boat. But listen to what happens. Jesus was in the stern. He was upset. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion, resting his head, good as gold, sleeping. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up. He didn't rebuke them. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Does that resonate a little bit? Why are you afraid? Are you scared to ask God for help? Are you scared to ask Christ for help? Do you, do you not have any faith? Then then listen, they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So if even the winds and the waves obey him, don't you think he would hear our pleas for help? Don't you think he hears them and that he responds? I think this is, and listen, did you notice? He didn't, he didn't get up and give a lecture. He just got up and, and calmed their fears. He helped them. He helped them. And it was interesting, I, I saw this. It, and it spoke to me. It said, what we fear the most is where we have the least faith. Wow. What I fear the most is where I have the least faith. So then I had to start asking myself, what is it I'm scared of? Because I don't believe God can help me. I don't think God can help me with that. That's what I'm saying. If I'm really scared of something, then I'm really saying is I don't think God can see me through that. The one that says, is anything too hard for me? Is anything to, I mean, I remember reading in this, talking about the creation, and he says, that's the work of my fingertips. Have you tried to create a universe lately? The work of my fingertips? I can't make a bench out of a tube of floor. He created a universe. 
And that was the work of his fingertips. It's pretty powerful. So what we fear the most is where our faith is weakest. That, that kind of caught me a, a little off guard to think about that. Because all it's saying is, I don't think he can help me. So I'm, I'm going to leave you with that on this one. Do you think your problem is so big that you can't ask God for help? Because you can. You can, and it's right here and it's right now. There's no committee. You just give it to Him. You just earnestly, you, you, give, your, you give your issues, you reach out to God. Here's where I need help, God. Here's where I need help. He's, and, and I know what He's going to say. I sent my son. I've helped you. I've sent my son, and I'll continue to help you. It's amazing. We, we need help overcoming our sin. Have you, have you noticed that? We, we do. We, we constantly need help overcoming sin. And it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting to me that we, we, we battle that and we, we work with it. But, but we've gotten this promise. And again, Paul said this is in Colossians 2, verse 13 through 15. Listen to what he says. He says, when you were dead in your sins... In the uncircumcised, uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was used against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. Did you get that? He made a public spectacle of our sins. A public spectacle. Because you and I can't overcome our sins. We can't help that. Christ can. Now, our help is to call on His name. Is to reach out to Christ, to give him our, to give him, but listen, I can't do it. Because what God did is he sent his son, he died on the cross to give us this help we so desperately needed. And then what Paul said, he said, listen, and not only did he overcome them, he made a spectacle of them. It's powerful. So don't miss that. You won't help Christ died on the cross so that you and I could overcome our sins, so that they could be taken away from us. But it gets, listen, I can go on and on and on, but it gets, let me give you another one. It gets better. Well, it doesn't get better. It's just, it's always good. One of the things I think every one of us strives for, everybody in this room, every one of us want to be happy. We want to find happiness. Every now and then I run into the person I think, they don't want to be happy. They typically don't like Santa Claus is the first thing that tips me off, is, is they don't want to be happy. They don't, I mean, you've been around that person occasionally. They just, everything is doom and gloom. Well, I have Jesus. Everything I have is, 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 Man, I have Jesus, and he came to help me, and he came to, to bring me happiness. And, and this is, this, really, this is where it gets pretty exciting to me, because we, we, we try to find happiness in worldly ways, and, and that's human nature. That's where we're at, and that's who we are. We find happiness in our human ways, in our worldly ways. The problem with that happiness is it doesn't last. It's usually very temporary. It's kind of fleeting. It, it comes. It's, it's kind of a high, and then it, it goes away, and then maybe you'll do something else and get another high, and then it'll go away. But, it, but it's always, that, that, the worldly happiness is all over the place. It's up and down. It's up and down. You've seen it. One day you're having a great day. The next day everything's terrible. But we chase it, and we chase it with worldly matters. And there, don't miss me on this point. There's nothing wrong with what I'm about to say. But this is, this is where we think we find our happiness, and I'll give you a good example. We get a new job. Have any of you ever had a new job? And when we get the new job, yeah, when we get the new job, it's the greatest job ever. I got this new job. Can you believe? They are awesome. They're going to pay me. They're going to give me some money. And then six weeks later, can you believe how little they're paying me to do that? The newness wears off, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, okay, I'm not very happy about the new job. Listen, I love new cars. I'm going to upset somebody on this. I love new cars. The smell of a new car is amazing, isn't it? Everybody's nodding their heads. You love the smell. I tried to duplicate. I thought I can get some leather and lay it in my car and it'll always smell like a new car. Didn't work. Just didn't work. I had a bunch of leather laying in there. Couldn't get anything else in there. It didn't work. But I love new cars. And, it, and I was really happy. We've had a couple. And I was really happy till the first payment showed up. Or till, or till, here's something I've learned about new cars. They wear out. They wear out. Tell you something else. I'll give you some financial advice. Somebody's looking at me because I got a broken down used car. Uh, I, I, I'll give you some, I can give you some financial advice. I, 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 listen, you want to take a lot of money and turn it into a little money? Buy a new car. I mean, seriously, have you ever seen a car go up in value? Unless you bought some kind of collector's item. But that's neither here nor there. Listen, we like cars, and I get that. I like cars. Nothing wrong with it. If you can afford it, buy a new car. But it won't give you happiness. It'll give you some temporary happiness. 
Houses. And I can speak to this. We built two new houses. They were awesome for about six months. And then we started realizing what we didn't have that we wanted. I'm thinking, wow, I was pretty happy. Now I'm going, I wish I'd have done this. Now I'm not unhappy, but I'm, I'm thinking I could do better. We're not building another house. I'm tired. Do you know something when you build a new house you have to do? You have to move. That brings no happiness. Jesus can't even help you through that one. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> I'm sick that day too, by the way. You, listen, what all, I'm just saying this to say this. Worldly happiness is, is, is fleeting. A guy named Solomon, who, who, who we know is the, was, was the king of Israel, and labeled as the smartest man, the wealthiest man, and you need to grab hold of this wealth part. I did a little research, and I've done this before. If you go back and look at Solomon's life, and you take his estate, his wealth, and you multiply it forward today, he would still be the richest man in the world. I saw estimates somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.1 with a T trillion dollars is what his net worth would be. 2.1 trillion. I saw several that took it even much higher, up into the hundreds of trillions. That's a lot of money. The closest person I could find when I was looking was Rockefeller, who has about 600 billion. So you get, the, you get the extent of what Solomon was worth, a lot of money. A trillions, I can't understand billions, I can't understand millions. I'm, I'm struggling with thousands, but I got ones. I got a couple ones, that one I can handle. It's a lot of money, and money, what, money buys what? It don't buy happiness, that's right. But here's what we say money buys. Listen to this, this is Solomon in Ecclesiastes. Chapter one, verse 12. I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on me. That should tell us something right there. What a heavy burden God's laid on me. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. And he said this, all of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. What is twisted cannot be straightened, and what is lacking cannot be counted. You can have it all. $2.1 trillion dollars. And he couldn't find happiness in his worldly possessions. But we find happiness in Christ. We can. It's promised. It's guaranteed. I, I mean, and I think that's, why aren't we telling that side of the story? You can't do this and you can't do that and God's against this and God's against this. But he wants me to have a life and he wants me to have it to the full. And sin is sin. We're not going to dance around sin. I would tell you this. You want to have a full life? Take the sin out of your life. Take the sin out of your life. But listen, listen to what Paul said, and this is powerful. This is we find happiness through Christ, and it's in Philippians 4, verse 10 through 13. He says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever the circumstances. Did you get that? He could be content with what? That sounds like happiness to me. I'm okay in whatever the circumstances. And Paul had some bad circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. I've learned the secret to being happy. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through Him, Christ, who gives me strength. You want to find happiness, true happiness, it's through Christ. It's through Christ. Nothing wrong with cars, nothing wrong with houses, nothing wrong with possessions, until we worship them. But our happiness is never going to be found in those. Our happiness is found in Jesus. That's, that's, isn't that simple? I mean, we can chase all these things. Psalm said, listen, it was all like chasing of the wind. And then Paul comes on and says, but I found happiness and I found it through Christ. I, I found it through Christ. And it's powerful and it's amazing. And I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. I, I, I just started thinking about this. I thought, why, why, are we, why do we stop with, hey, let me tell you about Jesus, everlasting life. Except Jesus, you got everlasting life. So why don't we, maybe we need to put, but wait. You get, you get listen, a relationship with Jesus, everlasting life, eternity. But wait. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And with that, he says, listen, I want you to, I'm going to give you life and I'm going to give it to the full. And I can help you. When, when, you, when you need help, I'm here to help you. And when you're searching for happiness, I am, and my son is the happiness. And I'm, I'm here for you. I'm just right here waiting on you. All you got to do is call. All you got to do is ask, ask. Call on my name. Because wait, there's more. And as I thought about it, I thought there is so much more to Christ. Now, dying on the cross, can't fathom it. Why he died for me, the broken, sinner, messed up, jacked up person. I, get, I don't get that. Grace is an amazing thing. 
Mercy is an amazing thing. But then I look at it and say, okay, I don't get that. He's got to be looking at me going, but why don't you get the goodness that I came to share while you're here? And why aren't you sharing it daily? Why aren't you telling people, hey, there's a guy named Jesus. He, he died on the cross for you so that you could find help. You could find happiness. You could find life to the full. You can, I mean, I'm, I, this is mind-boggling to me. I can have happiness in all circumstances. Try that with the earthly means. Try that with the earthly means. It's tough. Everything I've seen worldly typically lets us down. I found one thing that never lets me down. Jesus. Jesus. Isn't that powerful? We, we, we search. We've got all this great knowledge and all this power with, with technology to, to, to program and compute and algorithms and everything. And, and, and happiness is a guy named Jesus. That simple. Happy, happy. Listen, you know how much money that would save us if we just figured out that Jesus is the source of our happiness? Wow. So, listen, I don't know what you're going to do with that. I don't. But maybe you're somebody's here or someone you know is, is needing help. Point them to Jesus. Just point them to Jesus. And you can do that in a number of different ways. Maybe, maybe somebody here or someone you know is searching for happiness. And they're chasing it in all the wrong ways. Point them to Jesus. Just point them to Jesus. And, and watch what happens. It, it's amazing. It, it's, it's promises too, by the way. It's all right here. If we just take this thing and open it up. And it's one thing to open it up. I've learned this. It took me a long time. I opened this thing up when I was a kid. And, and I read parts of it. And I, I you know, didn't understand some and some I did. And some I just thought, well, I, that's, a little, that's a little fishy for me. I don't think it works. But I learned something. When I started living it, it changes everything. It changes everything. Things that were, were kind of tough, I found out I can get through this with Jesus. I can find happiness through Jesus. I can find help through Jesus if I'll just give it to Him. So listen, maybe somebody's here today that needs a relationship with Christ. And maybe you've been here enough that you, you, you understand and you think, I get this, I want it. And what we believe, and, and I just think this is so crucial, is you have to believe Jesus is who he said he is. And that's the Son of God. That he was born of a virgin birth. That he was crucified, dead and buried. And on the third day, this is what's so key, on the third day he rose from the dead. And that was prophesied and that was promised and it was actual. He rose from the dead. And he did that for you and I. So that we could have help and we could find happiness and have life eternal. So if you believe that, then I would just tell you this, just bow your heads and just pray with me. If, if you want a relationship with Christ, just bow your heads. Everybody bow with me right now. Father, I am broken. I'm a sinner. My life is messed up, and I, I don't know how you do it, but I know you, you, died. you sent your son who died for me. I give you my life. I turn it over to you. I yield to you as my Lord and Savior. Take me, use me, move me, and, and I can't wait because there's more. Father, I, I, by making this decision, I know I have life eternal, but I want to be able to, I want to find help when I need it. I want to share help with others. I want to be happy and I want to share happiness with others. And I can only do that through your son, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now that is so powerful. That is so powerful. And if you're one of those that prayed that and you sincerely prayed it and you do trust that God and that Jesus is all of those things, then welcome to the kingdom. And I can tell you this, there's an amazing party going on in heaven. It says they'll, help, they'll rejoice when one accepts. So thank you for creating a party. That's powerful. We should be partying right now if someone made that decision. So thank you. And maybe if you're here today and you're a follower of Christ, maybe, maybe we need to add something to the story. Instead of just telling people about Jesus and everything he's against, why don't we start telling them about what Jesus is for and what he come to bring to us, which is life to the full. Sin is sin. We won't waver on that. Will not waver on it. Sin is sin. And you want to bring somebody joy? Sometimes you have to point out the sin in their life because it's the hindrance. That's love. That's just love. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you that we can come together and that we have your name to call on. We can call on you when we need help and you will provide. And nothing is too hard. We can call on you when we're in search of happiness and you've provided that through your son, Jesus. We can be content through you in all circumstances. So thank you. Father, thank you for erasing the worldly model and giving us your model, which is always better. So be with us as we go forward. 
just watch over us, guide us, direct us. Help us to go forward with, with confidence, with confidence and assurance when we, go, when we go in your name, Father, that everything we do should be to glorify you. For it's these things we pray in your holy name. Amen.